Hey everyone, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural brick material in Blender. And we're even going to be using displacements to actually make the bricks pop out of the mesh. So if I just go into rendered mode here, I can show you. So if you zoom in here, you can see that the bricks are actually being displaced and they're actually popping out the mesh. Now this displacement is adaptable. You can see that I've turned on the adaptive subdivision and I'll show you how to set this up in the tutorial, but you can see this is a little bit low quality. So I just need to update this. So I'll just double tap on the tab key and that'll just kind of update it because we went into edit mode and then we went back into object mode and you can see there we go. So you can see with this displacement here, it's actually displacing the mesh. And so we're going to use this procedural brick texture and it's going to go through here and then it's going to actually displace the mesh. So that is super cool. Just a couple quick things before we get started. If you'd like to help support this channel and also get the project files for this procedural material, as well as other project files, then you can do that that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. And I'd also like to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. On Sketchfab, you can upload your own 3D models and preview them in your browser. You can even view them in AR, VR, or on a phone or tablet. You can also purchase 3D models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so real quick before we actually start doing the material setup, I just wanted to show you the setup that I have. So what I did is I press shift A and I just added an icosphere because this is a part of my procedural series of tutorials on YouTube. I just want to use a sphere, but of course you could just make like a brick wall or whatever object you want to use. The important thing is that the geometry is pretty even. So you can see that all these faces are about the same and that's because we will be using the subdivision surface modifier and then we'll be using the adaptive subdivision division and that way it'll add the extra geometry that we need to actually displace the mesh. So it doesn't have to be super detailed but just make sure it has even topology. And then I added a camera and I just pointed it right at the sphere and then I also just used this plane light so it just adds some nice lighting on the sphere. And then also to get some nice lighting I added this Aerodynamics Workshop 1K, and this is on polyhaven.com. So I'll leave the link in the description if you'd like to download it. It's a free HDRI. And so I just added this in as an environment texture to get some nice lighting. All right, so let's go over to the shading tab and we can get started. So I'm just going to go into rendered mode just so that we can see it right up here. I'll just click on the sphere right here and then we can just click on new and I can just call this procedural brick, procedural brick, just like that. And then one more thing real quick before we get started, I'm going to be using the node wrangler add on while we are setting this up. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can just click on edit and then go to the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons, you can just start to type in node right over here on the search and you can just check mark the node Wrangler add-on. It's built into Blender, so it will be there. So just check mark it. And then right behind me, there's the save preferences button. You can click on the save preferences button if you want the node Wrangler add-on to be in all your future Blender projects. It's a really useful add-on and I'll show you how we're gonna use it. So we can just close the user preferences now. All right, so let's get started with this procedural setup. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna go to the search and we are going to start with a brick texture. So the brick texture is going to be the base of our material. Now we just turned on the node wrangler add on. So what you can do is you can hold down the control and shift key and then click on a node. And what that's going to do is going to add the viewer node and then you'll be able to preview different nodes. So you can hold down the control and shift key and click on different nodes and it'll preview them. Here's the brick texture, but you can see that it's rotated a little bit weird. You can of course set this up however you like. You probably aren't going to use a sphere. You're probably going to use a brick wall or something like that, um, but I'm just using a sphere. What I'm going to do is just select this node and then I'm going to press control T and that's using another feature from the node wrangler. And what's going to do is going to add this texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then what I want to do is I just want to use object. I'm going to use object. Of course, if you're making a brick wall, you might want to like UV unwrap it really just set that up however you like. I'm just going to use object. And then the object shouldn't be in the location. It needs to be right up here on the vector. So on the top one, just like that. All right, and then we can use this mapping node to rotate the texture. So right here on the rotation, we need to rotate the X value by 90 degrees. So I'm just going to click on it, type in 90 and enter. And there we go. Now it's rotated over by 90 degrees. And then also we can play around with the size because it's a little bit high detail right now. So right here on the brick texture, I'm going to turn the scale down a little bit. 
and that way there will be less bricks. You can just set this to whatever you like. So now we can go ahead and set up the colors. So color one, I want this to be like a red color, not super saturated. If you bring it way down here, it's gonna be extremely saturated, just kind of like this, um, a bright red, something like that. And then color two is going to be kind of a darker red, a little bit brown, kind of like a reddish brown, something like that is pretty good. So you can see now the bricks just kind of have random colors. And then the mortar, that is the stuff in between. I just want to make this actually a little bit of a lighter brown, not super light, but just kind of like a brown color and probably a little bit less saturated. All right, something like that is pretty good and we can change these later if we need to. So that is looking pretty good. Now let's take the color and we're going to put it into the color of the base color on the principled BSDF. And I can now hold down the control and shift key and click on the principled and we can see it starting to look like bricks. We need to add a lot more realism though, so let's do that. So first, I just want to add some basic bump with this normal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the factor and plug that into the normal. Now, this doesn't work because this is gray and this is purple, so we need to convert it to normal data. So to convert it, we're going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a bump node. We're just going to drop the bump node right here, and then we just want to put the factor up to the height and then the normal into the normal. So now if you kind of go on side view here and look at it, you can see it's kind of popping out, but it's actually the wrong way. So you can just click on the invert button and it's going to flip that. And then we might as well set up the displacement now. So the displacement is optional. If you don't want to use the displacement, you don't have to, but I think it does make the bricks look a lot more realistic because these bricks are actually going to pop out of the mesh. So let's set that up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click right up here bring this out. Uh, what I need to do is on the feature set right here, I need to set this to experimental. So we'll change it to experimental. Then what we need to do is we need to click right over here on the material properties. And let's just go right down here to the settings. And then right here under surface, you can see that there is a displacement. So on default, it's set to bump only. I want to use displacement and bump. So we're going to turn that on. So it's telling it to actually use the displacement. So now we just need to do two more things. We need to give it more detail, so more geometry, and then we also need to give it data to actually displace it. So let's click, click right over here on the modifiers. We're gonna click on add modifier, and we wanna add the subdivision surface. And it might be a little bit laggy at first when we're adding it. All right, and there we go, it added the subsurf. Now we wanna turn on the adaptive subdivision because this is really helpful, and this way it's only gonna add geometry where we're actually looking at it. So if we zoom close up here, like if you're doing an animation or something like that, and you zoom the camera up, it's going to subdivide it and make it higher detail where you're looking at it. But then on a part that's farther away or a part that you can't see, it'll make that lower detail. So that is gonna be really helpful for performance and making it higher detail where you actually see it. And then I thought I'd just add this in the video because it might be helpful to some people. So if you want to make like a brick wall, what I did is I just made this simple object and then I added the finished brick material. But you can see because we have this adaptive subdivision, it is a subdivision surface. And so it smooths it out. And so it almost looks like kind of like a pillow shape. And for a brick wall, you want it to be sharp on the edges. Now you could add bevels, but that's going to add a lot more geometry to your mesh and you already have this subdivision. So what you can do instead to fix this issue right now, it's set to Catmull Clark. If you just change it to simple, now it's still going to subdivide the mesh, but it's going to keep the edges sharp. Just thought I'd throw that in the video for anyone who wants to make a brick wall. And then you can see here that there is a dicing scale. What you do if you want more detail is you turn it down. So you could just leave it at one. You could also turn it down to like 0.1. That's going to be really high detail. Or if you want to be less detailed, you could turn it up to like 10. So the smaller it is, the more detailed it is. So I'm just going to set it to one. I think one is pretty good. Just note that the higher detail it is, so the smaller you make this, the more processing power it's going to take and the longer it's going to take to actually process it. So you may not want to turn this down super low because it might get laggy or maybe crash blender, depending on how powerful your computer is. So I'm just going to leave it at one. That works pretty well for me. All right, so now we just need to actually give it data to displace. So if I go back into render mode, I can control shift and click twice on the brick texture. And you can see that the brick texture has a factor value. And this is exactly what we want it to displace because the bricks, we want it to be popping out and then the rest of it we want to be going back in. So let's take this factor right here and we're going to plug it into the displacement on the material output. Now it doesn't actually really work well right now. You can see it has a really weird thing happening. That's definitely not what we want. And this is because we didn't convert it 
to displacement data. So what we need to do is press shift A and we need to search for the displacement node. And then we can just drop the displacement node right here and we can just bring this down. And then we don't actually want the factor to be going into the normal because that's gray to purple. So we wanna actually put this into the height. So the factor from the brick texture needs to be going into the height. And then the displacement on the displacement needs to be going over to the material output here on the displacement value. So there we go. Now now if you look around you can see it's definitely doing something although it's popping out the mortar and it's not popping out the bricks so what we need to do first of all is this uh, mid-level we need to turn this to zero because we don't want any of that and then also we need to turn this scale way down so i'm going to change it down to like a 0.1 and that's definitely better but it's still way too strong so i'm going to change it down to like a 0.008 and you can see there that is a lot better that scale is much more realistic but you can see it's still reversed so the mortar is going out instead of the bricks so to switch this we need to press shift a and we can just search for an invert node so we're just going to drop the invert node right before the displacement and that'll flip the values and then if we control shift and click on the principle it does take a moment to load up because it's doing that displacement but now you can see if you look on the side here this is actually real bump now you can see that this is pretty low quality you can see how glitchy that is and that's because we zoomed really close up to it so when you render this with the camera it's always going to reset so depending on where the camera is it will displace it correctly using the adaptive sub division but it'll actually do this in our view as well so we just need to update it and then it's going to update from where our view is so a really easy way to update it is to just tap twice on the tab key and that'll go into edit mode and then it will go back into object mode and that'll kind of update it so you can see it is taking a moment to update it is taking a little while we'll just wait for this to finish there we go it finished and you can see that is way higher detail so that is much better so i can just move to a different area actually i can just go into the camera and then i can just double tap the tab key just to reset it and of course if you do anything in here like if you change the nodes or anything that'll update it as well and it'll re-render all right and then just to make this look a little bit nicer what i'm gonna do is hold down the shift key and then right click and drag and it's gonna add this little reroute right here so i can just drag this up and then shift right click and drag add another reroute just that it looks a little bit nicer uh, this is totally optional you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i do think it makes it just a little bit easier to see and then also we can reroute both of these so i'm gonna hold down the shift key right click and drag and it'll reroute that so there we go, I can just move this down. All right, that looks a little bit nicer. All right, so that is the displacement done. So now let's go ahead and make this look really nice and make it a much more photorealistic. If I zoom in here, you can see all these bricks are very, very straight. And that's not really realistic because bricks are somewhat organic. They're a little bit bumpy and rough. So what I wanna do is add a texture and use that texture to make the bricks a little bit bumpy. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search here for a noise texture. We'll just drop it right down here. And then I'm gonna move the texture coordinate and mapping back a little bit and then plug the vector into the vector of the noise texture. And then what I can do is I can take this factor here and I can plug it into the mortar smooth. So now if I control shift and click on this, this will be a little bit easier to see. And you can see it kind of took a while for it to load up. Um, so what we can do while we're just playing around with this is we can just go over here to the subdivision and we can click on this little icon right here. It looks like a monitor and that will hide the adaptive subdivision so it'll process a lot quicker and then at the end we can just turn it back on and then it will render the displacement so let's just zoom in here and you can kind of see what it's doing I want to turn the scale up on the noise texture so I'm going to turn it up to maybe like a 40 and you can see there it's just adding little lumps and bumps and that looks much more realistic I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up to 16 so it's nice and detailed so there we go you can play around with the scale you can play around with the detail really just get to how you like because you can see if I turn this down there's going to be like not as many bumps um, I do like this at about 40 I think 40 looks pretty good all right so I'm just going to control shift and click back on this now I also just want to add a little bit of dirt and grunge and things like that on the bricks so I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for a, another noise texture we're just going to drop another noise texture right here and then we can also plug the vector from the mapping up to this vector so let's control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. I'm going to turn the scale up to something like an eight and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 16 and then I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.68. So it has a bit more roughness. 
So now what I want to do is I want to use this noise texture and mix it together with the brick texture and then we'll put that into the base color so it'll look like it has a little bit more grunge and dirt and things like that. So to mix these together I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and we're just going to drop the mix RGB right down here. And then we're going to take the factor of the noise texture and plug it into this factor and then from mix we're going to change this to darken. So here it is darken and then we can control shift and click on it to see what it's doing. So we have this set to darken and then the brick texture is going into color one so color two let's just make this a dark brown so i'm going to make it very dark and you can see that now it's adding that noise there and it just looks a little bit dirty and old and worn so that looks really great now I also want this noise texture to be contributing to the bump so that it just has some little bits of bumps and stuff because bricks are pretty rough and bumpy. So I'm going to click on this bump and I'm going to press shift D and just drop it down here. And then I kind of need to move everything over. Okay, that is better. We have more room now. So we have this second bump here and we have the height going into the first one and the normal is just going into the normal. So now we have this extra height input and we can put things into it and add to the bump. So I'm going to take the factor for from this noise texture and I'm going to plug it way down here on the height right here and now you can see look at that it's making it all super super bumpy and then we can also turn off the invert because we don't really need to use that on this one and then we can also play around with the strength so right now it is pretty strong so I'm going to turn it down because I do want it to be more subtle so I think I'll turn this to like a 0.25 just look at that. There we go. That looks a lot better. So you can see it is rough, but it's not super, super rough. That looks pretty good. All right. Now I also want to add some more grungy stuff. And I also want to make it look like there are some pieces of the brick wall that have kind of been crumbling. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for a, another mix RGB. And I will just drop this mix RGB right here. So what I want to do is use this noise texture and plug it into the mix. But I only want to use some certain areas and make that the crumbling older parts. So I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for a color ramp just drop the color ramp right here and then this noise texture right here it's going to go into the factor of the factor of the noise texture so I can now control shift and click on the noise texture and we can preview it so I want to make it a lot more contrasty just that we have some areas but not all the areas so I'm going to bring this way over and then I'm also going to bring the white tab way over so you can see that now we just have some bits that are white but then most of it is black so I can now use this color ramp as the factor for this mix. So we're going to take the color and put that into the factor and then I can control shift and click on this. So I don't want it to be white. I want it to be kind of like a yellowish kind of tannish brownish color. So I'm going to take color two and I'm going to make that kind of like a brownish or tannish color, something like this, whatever you want to do, kind of like a light brown. And then this other mix RGB, it's set to darken. That's going to be going into color one. So let's control shift and click on that. So that does look pretty good, but it doesn't really make any sense right now because it's not contributing to the bump. So it's not like cutting in where that extra detail is. So I actually want to put this into the bump as well. And that way where these parts are, it's going to be cutting in and it's kind of going to look like that part of the brick wall is kind of crumbling away. So I'm going to take a bump, press shift D. We'll just drop it down here and we'll make a third bump. And then I want to take the color ramp here and take the color and plug it into the height. And there you go. You can see that definitely looks better. I do want to turn on the invert because I want it to look like it's going in instead of out. So we're going to turn on the invert. And then I also want to turn the strength up quite a bit. All right. And then let's also put a value into the roughness. So what I'm going to do is just take this mix here and we'll put the color into the roughness value. Now, when we do this, it's super, super shiny. You can see how shiny that is. It almost looks like it's wet. Um, I don't want this. I want more control over how shiny I want it to be. So I'm going to press shift A. We're going to search for a color ramp and we'll drop the color ramp right here. So now what I can do is I can click on this black tab here, which is going through the roughness, and I can just turn this up and make it more and more white. And you can see that as I turn it up, it's going to make the bricks more and more rough. So I don't want them to be that rough because that's super rough. But then if I turn it down, that's definitely too shiny. So just kind of like a light gray, something like that is pretty good. All right, so we are almost done with this material. Let's just go back over here to the modifiers, and then we can turn on the subdivision so that it'll actually preview it and check out that final material. Now I just want to update it again. So I'm just going to select it and then double tap on the tab. So it'll go into edit mode and then go back into object mode and that'll just update it. 
We'll just wait for that to load up and there we go, super nice. And the displacement is super cool as well because the bricks actually pop out of the mesh. So there we go, there it is. There is the finished procedural brick material with actual displacement. You can see here over on the side, it's using real displacement and it's actually popping out those bricks in the material. So that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you'd like to help support this channel, I'm trying to make Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support the channel as well as get the project files for my tutorials, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. But thanks for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.